we can now be more inclusive in administering vaccinations. Since the start of the vaccination exercise, a few subgroups have not been included, mostly because of medical reasons. The expert committee on COVID-19 vaccination, our EC19V, uh, they have reviewed the global and local data relating to these subgroups and is satisfied that vaccination is safe and efficacious for many of these subgroups. Who are they? Number one, pregnant women. Number two, breastfeeding women. Number three, cancer patients on treatment, but before they receive their vaccinations, they ought to consult their doctors and receive the vaccination in a hospital setting. Number four, persons with severe cutaneous adverse reactions. The current restrictions for these subgroups will be lifted from 4th of June 2021. So based on the rollout schedule for the various groups, if you belong to this subgroup and your age group has, the turn for your age group has started, you may register for vaccinations. Last important point on vaccination, very important point, is that the expert committee is also examining the data and reviewing the current policy where we restrict individuals with known anaphylaxis to take the vaccine. Specifically, the committee is reviewing the restriction for those who are not allergic to the mRNA vaccine or its components, but other substances like seafood, painkiller, antibiotics. The review will take about two weeks with the intention of removing these restrictions and allowing more individuals in this group to be eligible for vaccination. And this is quite a sizable group of over 30,000 individuals. So the lifting of these restrictions will be a fairly meaningful one. Director for Medical uh, Services, Associate Professor Kenneth Mark will speak more about this in a short while. Um, finally, I want to talk about the special access route. Uh, MOH has authorized two vaccines, as everyone knows, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. And these, are, these two vaccines are also used in our national vaccination program. And they are vaccines used in other countries. But either there have been no applications to use those vaccines in Singapore, or the application is outstanding with data still pending. These vaccines can be useful for individuals who are unable to take the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine or the Moderna vaccine due to medical reasons. As I mentioned earlier, it's not a small group, over 30,000 individuals. So the review by the expert committee to allow more people with a history of anaphylaxis to take these two mRNA vaccines will address a large part of the current concern. Nevertheless, to provide more flexibility, HSA will open up the special access routes under the therapeutic products regulations. And this is an existing avenue to import and supply unregistered medicines to address medical needs in unique or special circumstances. And this is for a limited duration and only during a pandemic. Under this route, HSA will take reference the vaccines that the World Health Organization approved to include in its EUL or emergency use list. Once a vaccine is included in the EUL, a private licensed healthcare institution can bring it in to administer to individuals in Singapore. The vaccines currently under the EUL includes uh, Pfizer-BioNTech, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and Sinopharm. As and when the WHO approves the Sinovac vaccine into its emergency use list, a licensed healthcare institute, institution can apply to MOH to draw on our existing stock of 200,000 doses to administer to those who wish to have it. Now, let me hand over the floor to DMS Kenneth Mark. 
Thank you very much, Minister. To now, we've had uh, a vaccination program going on uh, quite smoothly, and uh, uh, Minister has announced that uh, we've uh, vaccinated just over 4 million uh, doses uh, being given out, and a total number of uh, persons vaccinated being over 2.2 million. This is nearly 40% of our population. Our vaccination centres make good progress in vaccinating eligible Singaporeans since we started at the end of December 2020, and about 73% of the elderly over 60 years of age have booked their appointments or received their vaccinations. The majority of frontline workers have also received their vaccinations. Amongst eligible healthcare workers, more than 87% have booked or received their vaccinations. And the proportion of essential workers in other sectors receiving their vaccinations is also high. We've been working closely with the Health Sciences Authority and the Expert Committee on COVID-19 Vaccination to review the eligibility criteria for vaccinations. And I'm pleased to share that the MOH is satisfied that the COVID-19 vaccinations are safe and efficacious for most people, for more people with health needs. And we are issuing an updated guidance today, which allows vaccinations to be given to the categories that Minister uh, Ong has mentioned. And in particular, patients who had previously experienced severe cutaneous adverse reactions or, or severe skin allergic reactions to medications other than the mRNA vaccines or components of those vaccines can now receive vaccination. And this will include specific medical conditions like Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal, uh, necrolysis. These are very severe uh, reactions that occur as a result of taking various types of medications. And if you had previously had such a severe allergic reaction to medications like antibiotics, you will now be eligible to receive your COVID-19 vaccination. Secondly, women who are pregnant may receive vaccination after they discuss and receive endorsement from their obstetrician. And this applies irrespective of the stage of pregnancy. Also, if a woman had become pregnant after receiving her first vaccine dose, she may proceed with a second vaccination after discussion with her obstetrician. Women who are breastfeeding are eligible for vaccination. They can continue to breastfeed their baby throughout the period for first and second dose vaccinations, and there's no need to stop breastfeeding. For patients with active cancer and are, and are undergoing chemotherapy, immunotherapy, or radiation therapy presently, or recently in the past three months, we had previously exercised considerable caution and advised that they complete their treatment before getting vaccinated. We have since reviewed the data and experience in other countries and will now allow them to get vaccinated after they are assessed by their treating doctors on their suitability for vaccination. At this time, we prefer for these patients to be vaccinated in a hospital setting where they can be better monitored for their health status. And we will review later whether these conditions can be re revised. Patients who are soon to start chemotherapy immunotherapy or radiation therapy in the next two months should similarly consult their oncologist for their suitability for vaccination. But patients with a past history of cancer and who are no longer on active treatment can apply for vaccination in any of our vaccination centres. We hope that these adjustments to our guidance will offer vaccination opportunities for more people and allow them to benefit from the enhanced immune protection that vaccination offers as we see more cases arising in the community and with the emergence of more cases due to viral variants of concern. 